So it's not very often that a distro surprises me because, well, usually I know what I'm getting into, or at least somewhat. But I have to say that the distro we're going to take a look at today surprised me in both good and bad ways. And we're going to talk about quite a bit of the both the good and the bad in this one. But first, let's set the stage, shall we? There is a long history of developers wanting to make Linux distributions that look, feel, act, and function like Windows. And for good reason. I think that a lot of people feel that when you switch from Windows to Linux, it's an easier transition if what you go to kind of looks and feels familiar. I think that that's true. But there's also been a, a thing that goes on over the course of the last couple of years where shady folks come in and try to do this while trying to make a quick buck by really emulating windows where they you know they charge you a license fee or something in order to remove the watermark or they have not actually made the thing that they created open source or all sorts of things that just feel shady or are sometimes downright scams. The most recent one that I'm thinking of is something called Wubuntu. That thing really tried to emulate Windows, and it did so in some really good and bad ways, right? So when I went into Anduin OS, which is what we're going to be taking a look at today, I had expectations, and none of them were good expectations. I thought it was going to be basically what we've seen before when it comes to Windows-like distros. It's going to be really like Windows. There's going to be some shady nonsense going on there in the background, and it's not going to be great. It's probably going to use KDE. It's probably going to have the Calamares installer. Uh, you know, they, they'll have put the effort into making it look and feel like Windows without actually making it a good distro. And I, I had all of these things in my head going in, and because of that, I didn't do any research going in. And I don't often do research on these types of distros because I do like to have a very clean first impression. I don't want to have to have someone else's impression, you know, color my first impression. So I didn't do any research, on it, but I did have those expectations and they were shattered. They really were shattered in, in some good and some bad ways. And we'll talk more about those as we go along. So today we're going to be taking a look at Anduin OS, a distribution that is based on Debian, kind of, and a, a, a distro that emulates how Windows looks and feels. Notice my very careful phrasing of that. So, but before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd be really appreciative. It really helped the channel. So let's go ahead then and jump into this thing. The first thing we should talk about is the installation. This is the first place where I was surprised. The first place where my expectations were changed like I something that I expected was different and that's that it doesn't use the calamari's installer it actually uses the ubiquity installer and I think that they still call this the ubiquity installer but whatever they call it this is the Ubuntu installer the one that you've probably used a dozen times over the years if you've used Linux for any amount of time this is the Ubuntu installer they've made no changes it's exactly what it is if you've ever installed Ubuntu before nothing that nothing synced to it now you are seeing in the b-roll that I'm doing now the look and feel basically looks like Windows. And we'll talk more about the UI here in just a second. So the installation, very clean. I will admit that it was quite slow. Now, I don't know if that's because I was installing in a VM or if it's just traditionally slow. I don't know. I will say that there's no snaps here, so it's not going to be something that I can blame on snaps. It's also possible that they just don't have really good mirrors selected. So one of those two things is true. I don't know which one it is, but it was quite slow. It took probably about 20 minutes in order to actually install, which is not fantastic for a distro that's not actually that packed with stuff. So there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead then and actually take a look at this thing while we're here. So so this is Anduin OS, and the biggest thing we'll talk about in this video is how it's laid out. And my first ex assumption when I heard of this distro, because all of the distros that try to do this usually do this, is that it would be based on KDE Plasma. And it's not. This is GNOME. Now, they've done a ton of work to make it not look like GNOME in certain places. So they, if we actually open up the extensions manager, or yeah, the extensions manager here, you'll, you'll be able to see that they have a ton of of extensions pre-installed. Now they don't have the actual extensions manager where you can install stuff, but 
I don't think that they wanted that here. They don't have you know, GNOME tweaks installed or anything like that. They wanted to make this very easy for new users while giving them too many options to customize it because that would lead to complexities that they weren't ready for, right? So this is very focused on the brand new to Linux user. As you can tell by the UI, they want this as a, a transitionary point from Windows to Linux by how they look and feel without giving them too much stuff to be overwhelmed with, right? So the GNOME extension stuff here, all is going towards that goal. Things like the arc menu, which makes the menu look like a Windows menu, right? Things like this weather thing down here, which is something that Windows 11 has. Things like the system tray and the clock and the desktop icons, all that stuff, right? Things that either GNOME either has and are in a different place or GNOME doesn't have like the icons that need to be there if you're going to emulate Windows. And all of that stuff is put in here by GNOME extensions. They've done a good job of providing enough of that kind of stuff without going too far. So again, I made the assumption that this was probably going to be using KDE. And one of the reasons why I assumed that is because KDE is mightily customizable, right? You can use something like Dolphin and you can make Dolphin emulate Windows Explorer. You can make it look basically the same. Uh, thing, and you can do anything you want with the UI in, in Plasma, and you can make all that stuff look precisely like Windows. Depending on how much work you put into it, you can drill down really far and make that thing look super, super like Windows. GNOME, it's much harder because you have to deal with extensions and all of GNOME's pesky anti-customizable stuff right and they've done a good job of utilizing gnome to make a windows clone without going too far something you'll hear me say over and over in this video probably is that this is somewhat like windows somewhat and i think that that's an important thing because if you go too far if you make it look too much like windows and function too much like windows users will assume that it actually looks and functions and is Windows. And when they have a problem, they're going to then assume that it's going to be solvable like Windows. And it's not because, as we all know, Linux is not Windows. It's just not, right? So no matter how much how much lipstick you put on the pig, it's always going to be Linux underneath. And I think that Anduin OS has done a really good job of taking it far enough where this looks very familiar to Windows users but without going too far. And I think that is really good. So that's the UI. It, it does look like GNOME in a lot of places, and that's because it is GNOME in a lot of places. So you have the terminal here. This is a GTK terminal. This is console. You can up, open up files here. This is Nautilus. They haven't done anything here other than change the icons to make this look anything like Windows, right? This looks like Nautilus because it is in fact Nautilus, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that that's actually a good thing. By not emulating Windows Explorer with Dolphin like most of these distros do, you're allowing people to experience Linux as Linux should be experienced. You're not fooling them into thinking that it's something that it's not. And I think that that's a good thing, right? Now in terms of pre-installed applications, we'll go through these a little bit, but there's not too much here that would surprise you. Most of this stuff here is what you'd get if you installed Ubuntu. We'll talk about the base of Anduin OS here in just a minute. But basically, if you've ever installed Ubuntu before, the vast majority of the stuff here is going to be stuff you'd see in Ubuntu. Things like console, clocks, GNOME clocks, chess, cheese, things like that. The disk usage analyzer, disks, things like that. They have added a few things like the GW package installer, which is not something you normally get on Ubuntu. Things like R Ramina, things like that. Uh, so they've added a couple things. There's a torrent client here down here further along the line. So they're ha they have added a few things, but not a lot. This is, is not a very bloated distro, but they've included everything that you'll need in order to have a full experience. Things like GNOME videos is down here so you can watch videos. Rhythm Box is installed so you can play your music and all that kind of stuff, right? So they've done a good job of selecting a suite of software that makes a lot of sense. They didn't include LibreOffice. Uh, that's a choice. I'm actually seeing more and more distros now that don't include Office software out of the box. I, I think that in this case, they probably could have gotten away with it because they are, again, emulating Windows and that has a version of Office usually pre-installed, even if it's a trial and malware and everything that goes along with Office. They could have installed it here, but they didn't. 
but you can obviously install this on your own. So let's then transition into what this thing is based off. Because if you go to their website, you will see that it says Anduin OS, subtraction on Ubuntu instead of addition. And then below that, it says it's a Debian based distro. So it's a little confusing, I think, for people who don't know what they're talking about here. It's a Debian based distro in the same way that Ubuntu is a Debian based distro. This is based on Ubuntu, okay? And now I can't prove that because it, it says it's a Debian based distro, which it is, but it has the Ubuntu based installer. It has most of the Ubuntu applications installed. Uh, it has all of the Ubuntu repositories instead of the Debian repositories. So it, this is based on Ubuntu, despite that it says based on Debian. It is based on Debian, but again, so is Ubuntu. So it's an Ubuntu-based distribution, and they also have removed snaps. And we'll talk more about applications in a few minutes. We'll, we've looked at pre-installed applications, but there's one big thing that we need to talk about here at the end that's going to ruin everything. So we will get to that. That's a big, big foreshadowing event. Just let me put that out there. So it's a Debian based Ubuntu based distribution that they've gone out of their way to make not feel like Ubuntu, but feel kind of more like Debian. I would tell them just to go ahead and use Debian, to be honest with you. I know that the reason why they did this this way is because they wanted the Ubuntu repositories, but the Debian repositories are also really good. You're not sacrificing too much in terms of like versioning or whatever. Yes, it's going to be a little bit older, but it's not going to be horrible in terms of differences there. I think that the the mixture marriage between Ubuntu and Debian based stuff here is a little confusing for people who know just enough to be dangerous, right? So I think that they'd be better off just basing this on Debian choosing one and not having the Ubuntu stuff because if you're going to use Ubuntu, then you should use the Ubuntu stuff which is basically snaps you, you you just should and this is the same problem i have with linux mint they should just use debian if they're going to go so far as to remove all the stuff that makes ubuntu ubuntu then they should just use debian this is the same thing here right so uh, it's not a big deal but it's just something that i thought about so there you go and they've done a good job of not making this a shady endeavor i, I will put that out there this is another thing that really surpass my expectations. They don't ask you for money. They have a link right at the top here to their source code. You can go right to their GitHub page and it has, or I guess this is going to be GitLab. So it has all of the stuff that you get from, from any open source software. It's right here and that's great. I think that that's, I mean, they haven't hidden it like some of the other distros have and, and that's just the way that it should be. So that's good. They also have a link to their support pages and their community and all that stuff, right? So they've done a good job of making a website that's fully functional, uh, available for support. They ha have the ability to easily install it, download it, all the stuff you'd expect from their website, which is really good. And it's not overly confusing. And all that stuff leads me to talk about the general experience, right? The general experience of using this is very, very good. And that was surprising to me. It was, it, it, I remember at the beginning, I said that I had very low expectations when it comes to came to this distribution because I expected it to be scammy. I expected it to ask me for money. I expected it to go too far in terms of making it look like Windows. I expected KD Plasma and the Calamari's installer. None of those things ended up being true. It ended up being very good in terms of UI because it didn't go too far. Again, it's somewhat like, like Windows, but not all the way there. It, it had a reasonable suite of applications without again going too far they didn't use plasma they used gnome which really blew me out of the water because usually again these distributions use plasma and all that stuff right it was a very good experience and that was a very surprising thing for me and then the deal breaker okay there's one big deal breaker so when you have a distribution that is blatantly for new users they still say it right here in this paragraph, it's, it aims to facilitate users transitioning from Windows to Ubuntu by maintaining familiar operational habits and workflows. Let's talk about that for a second, because when you are a new user and you want to install an application, you do so in any number of ways when you're on Windows. You can get an EXE file, which usually leads you to a wizard of some kind or an installer of some kind, or you go to the Windows store to install something. On traditional Linux distros like Ubuntu or... Uh, Linux Mint or OpenSUSE or 
literally any distribution you can think of, there's some kind of GUI way of installing applications that you can just launch. It's usually called software or App Store or App Center or something. Something clever, maybe. Well, let's go take a look at what Anduin has to in store for us. So we can actually search for App Store or we can search for software. It doesn't really matter. It's going to lead to the same place, you know, it says App Store. And I was like, ooh, what are they going to use here? Note what happens. It opens a web page. Now, there are other distributions that open a web page when it comes to their software center. Uh, there's a few of them that I can think of. I don't really remember their names, but there are a few of them that have web-based app stores. And almost all of them will lead you towards installing them in a, a certain way, right? And you can think of the way that they're going to lead you to install it because there's no easy way when you are dealing with an, a web page to interact with the operating system to install something. It works somewhat. So like if you're on FlatHub, you can press a button to install something if you have the proper tools installed on your operating system. That works, right? Things like the GNOME extensions website will, will allow you to basically click a little switch in order to install an extension. So something like that could work. What Anduin does is this. So if we wanted to say install Google Chrome, it leads you to the terminal. This is a, a, a distribution that is focused on brand new Linux users that the only way you can install software is by using the console. You have to go here, you have to co copy these lines of code one by one, and you got to know to do that, and then you have to install it that way. That's, a, that's not only a deal breaker, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, okay? If this was a, if this was Arch Linux, if this was OpenSUSE, if the, if this was any other distro that wasn't proclaiming itself to be brand new to for brand new to Linux users like noobs, right? If this was if this was any of those, I wouldn't think too much about it. I think it would still be stupid, but this is a distribution that proclaims itself for brand new users, and this is how they have you install software. When I first saw this, I was struck speechless because that's how mind-numbingly stupid that is. Now, I don't want to disparage the developers too much. This is a brand new project as far as I know. I, I just saw this on its FOSS a few days ago. That's how I ended up making this video. And it's possible that this dis this this distro is something that is really very new and they just haven't had a chance to do a, uh, an app store. It's an excuse I don't really buy. First off, they had enough time to put together this website. So there's that. And, and I mean, these this isn't this isn't a just a one line thing. They actually went through and did a legitimate job of ins of telling you how to fix an iBus issue on Chrome, or or if you wanted to install Fi Firefox, it it does all of these things. Like it, it does each of the applications that you can click on here. You can go to wherever you want, and it, it will give you a lot of information on how to install this thing, and it will give you pointers and stuff. Right? It, it's more than a paragraph. It was a lot of work to put in all this stuff for each and every application that's available to you, right? They did a lot of work for that. That work could have went into actually making an app store or using one that exists already. I understand that, that you, maybe you're anti-snap. I mean, it's okay to be anti-snap. I'm anti-snap. Install Flatpak, install Flathub, use the Flash store, the Flathub store that Fedora uses. That stuff's open source. You can pull that into Ubuntu without probably too much trouble, I would imagine. There's are any number of application stores out there that exist or have existed in the past that you could have used without dedicating yourself to using the Snap Store or whatever. Those things all exist. They were just a matter of doing enough work to plug it in here so that it would work. Instead, they went and did all of this stuff and then point everything towards the terminal. And that is... I, I, I don't know how to say it nicely, but other than it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen before. <laughs> like, like it, it's just mind boggling that this is the way that it is. It, it's weird and not good. And any adjective you want to put on this thing, it's it's all negative. There's 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 no redeeming quality for this way of doing applications for new Linux users. For, for me, fine. I'll go install anything I want via zipper. I'm a nerd. I've been using Linux for 10 years or damn close to it, right? I, I have a, a lot of Linux experience. Chances are, if you're watching this video and you've been watching my channel for any number of time, installing it stuff this way, not going to be a big deal. But this distro isn't 
for me. It's not for my regular audience who've watched this for a long time. It's for people who are brand new to Linux. And this isn't okay. This this is a beta feature in a saw in a distribution that otherwise blew me away. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not I don't think that I'm saying anything untrue when I say that this just really truly surprised me in a positive way. The UI is really good. It's very, very clean. They've done a good job of making it somewhat like Windows without going too far. They use GNOME instead of Plasma, which I think is a good choice for when you're trying to track new to Linux users. They've, they, they've included a reasonable suite of software without going too overboard. They don't, they don't have like an ISO that's like four gigabytes. It's like less than two gigabytes. They've based it on a distribution that makes a a lot of sense for a new user they even removing snaps didn't bother me because i think that that's a good thing having snaps isn't always proper for brand new to linux users having the ability to get applications just in from one repository is really good but they don't actually have that repository in a gui someplace where they can actually install it the, the they, they took all it was so disappointing for me because I, I i used this for a while without even seeing the app store stuff like i and i the App Store stuff isn't something that I normally check out really until the end because I don't ever use it. So I, I it's usually an afterthought. So and it was the same this time. And I was blown away. Like I like I told you, I, I was in a situation where I was going to praise this thing to as much as I possibly can praise something. And then I saw that. And I was like, I can't do it. That, that, that right there ruined everything. It made this a bad distribution. It, it takes a watt for like even the watt OS that I just I, I I roasted that thing on the video that I did the last time. I, I talked about how low effort in some places it, it actually was. Those guys blew this out of the water. Now I know watt OS has been around for a lot longer uh, than this has, but this is actually the low effort. This is this is not actually acceptable. Like the, the, not if you're trying to be what you're trying to be. This is not good. So do better. Like that's that's not no <laughs> bad developers bad um, and if you are the Anduin developer and you're watching this you should pull this distribution I truly honestly do believe that until you get an app store you shouldn't be selling this to someone who's brand new to Linux especially if you're going to point them towards the terminal that's not okay regular Linux sure we're, we're regular Linux users sure brand new users no that's not okay do better Okay. Wow. That, that went to, into a different place. I told you that it was going to turn around fast, and it did. If you have comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. Uh, I would love to hear from you if you have thoughts on the whole situation of, on how they did at the App Store. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you guys think that this is okay, and it's perfectly randy dandy. Uh, if that's the case, I'd love to argue with you about it in the, term, in the, in the terminal <laughs> below. We should call the comment sections the terminal, don't you think? <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this one. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me over on Patreon and YouTube and Kofi. All of you guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support over the years, whether you've been here recently or for, for a very long time. Thank you so very much for your support. If you would like to support me, you can do so again. Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Link for YouTube and Kofi will be in the video description. You can also support me on the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise to liven up your Linuxiness. Get nerd shirts. There's this one that says nerd right on the shirt. You can grab that one and all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.